It's not unusual for the weather to be fine, seas relatively calm, and the skipper an experienced sailor when the voyage begins. Or maybe the winds are still and the plane is running great when the pilot, who's been flying for years, heads down the runway. Still, what seems like a routine trip can become a nightmare. Whether it's a small plane down in a remote area or a mishap at sea, time can be the survivor's greatest enemy. The quicker they're found, the greater their chances for survival. Until recently, search and rescue teams often had little to go on in trying to find these people. Most likely just a report that a boat or plane never reached its intended destination. But today's search and rescue forces are getting the information they need from a new source, outer space. Thanks to a unique international cooperative effort originally spearheaded by NASA, involving the United States, Canada, France, and the Soviet Union as prime partners, there are now satellites orbiting the Earth with search and rescue equipment aboard them. The program is called COSPUS SARSAT. The name is complicated, but the goal simple, save lives. A key link in this rescue chain is the emergency radio beacons carried aboard ships and planes. The maritime device is called an emergency position indicating radio beacon. Its counterpart on aircraft has a slightly different name, but performs the same function. It's called an emergency locator transmitter. When activated, these beacons transmit a continuous, distinctive signal that can be picked up by a search and rescue satellite passing overhead. The satellite, in turn, relays this signal to a local user terminal, like this one at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. And it looks like there could be the start of a signal right here at this point. Okay, yeah, we got a good signal over here. We're in good shape. By analyzing these signals, the site of an accident can usually be pinpointed within a 10 to 15 mile radius. This information is then sent via a computer to computer link up to a mission control center and then on to a rescue control center near where the accident occurred. Inland aircraft incidents are handled by the Air Force. Here, trained personnel correlate any information they've received from other sources with emergency transmitter reports. They then alert the necessary search and rescue teams. Boston Aeronautics, this is Scott RCC. We've got an all knot on a Cessna 172 in the Northern Cascades and a SARSAT hit in the same area. Request that a search mission be opened with the Washington Civil Air Patrol. Operation Center, request sea load support for ELT search and coordinates. 4715 North, 120, 42 West. If someone's in trouble offshore, Coast Guard West. air and sea teams go to work. Roger, we'll get the helicopter and the C-130 in the air immediately. Jack Boyd, 
a stockbroker and Vietnam veteran, volunteered to sail his ultralight racing boat, Wings, from Miami to New York to dramatize a fundraising effort by the New York Vietnam Veterans Commission. I hope to make it in about five days if all goes well. Well, you never can tell the winds and <laughs> the winds and the tides. Boy's words were prophetic. Five days into the trip, 120 miles from shore, he was caught in a severe storm. After battling tremendous breaking seas for nearly three days, Boy finally activated his emergency radio beacon. I didn't know if anyone was hearing it. I hoped there was satellite, and I hoped that someone was uh, listening to it. I was really virtually powerless to, to rig the boat or do anything because the waves were still crashing across it. A Soviet satellite picked up Mr. Boy's signal, and the Point Arena eventually towed him safely to shore. And how does Jack Boy feel now about having an emergency beacon on board? It's like the American Express ad. Don't leave uh, shore without one.